Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you Bonnie's Lacy Summer Stole. And this particular stole is finished off with some knotted fringe. This is a delightful layer to wear when indoors, when that air conditioning is just cranked up a little bit too high, giving you just an added layer of, of just comfort and I think beauty as well. The yarn I chose for this project is a cotton flax blend, which I think you're going to enjoy very much. And it gives outstanding stitch definition for a lace project like this. This is an intermediate project, but as always, I believe a confident beginner should definitely give it a try or at least swatch a small swatch with whatever yarn you have on hand to see if you can handle the stitches. I believe you can, and I'll take it nice and slow for you. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you what you're going to need. This is the yarn I'm going to be using for this project. It is Sistari Sheep and Wool Company's Monticello Collection and it is 75% cotton, 25% flax. Each hank is 3.5 ounces or 100 grams or 370 yards. This is a number two fingering weight yarn. I'm also recommending that you have a size G or six or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors come in very handy. And if should you want to check your gauge, a tape measure would also be very helpful. To begin, we're going to work a slip knot and we're going to work a foundation chain of 78 chains. So after completing that starting chain, we're going to work row one and we're going to start in the sixth chain. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So that sixth chain, we're going to work a double crochet. So technically this chain counts as a treble and a chain one. Now we're going to chain one, skip two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to single crochet in that next stitch, which happens to be a chain. Chain one, we're going to skip two more stitches, one, two, and in the next stitch or chain, we're going to work a double crochet, followed by a chain one and then a treble crochet, a chain one and then a double crochet, chain one, skip two, one, two, and in that next chain, we're going to work a single crochet and that is the repeat across the row. I will do this for you one more time. Chain one, skip two, one, two, and in that next chain, we're going to work a double crochet, a chain one, a treble crochet, a chain one, and then a double crochet, chain one, skip two, and then a single crochet, followed by a chain one. So go ahead and repeat that all the way across the row. And I will show you how this row ends. After having worked this all the way across, I have ended with a single crochet and a chain one, and you should have three chains left. So we're going to skip the next two chains and in that last chain, we are going to work a double crochet, a chain one, followed by a treble crochet. There we go. And this ends row number one. Now we're going to turn to begin row number two with a chain one. We're going to work a single crochet, in that top of that treble crochet, chain one, and in the single crochet right down here, we're going to skip the chain one, the double crochet, the chain one, and we're going to work in that next 
single crochet we're going to prepare a hook for the treble so we're going to work a treble crochet there a chain one and we're going to work a double crochet along the side of the treble crochet by working in two of the strands of that treble crochet just like so and we work a double crochet so we create this little Y chain one and we're going to skip the chain the double crochet the chain and we're going to work in the top of the next treble crochet just like that I'll do this for you one more time and this is the repeat we're going to work across this row chain one skip the stitches until you get to the next single crochet which was in the valley there work a treble crochet chain one and then we're going to work a double crochet along the side of the treble and I do this by working in two of the strands just like that complete that double crochet and a chain one and then we skip until we get to that next treble crochet and we work a single crochet just like that so go ahead and work that across the row and I will show you how this row ends after working this all the way across the row just make a single crochet in that chain five just like that let's stop and take a look at what we have now we're going to turn to begin row three chain one and we are going to single crochet in that first single crochet chain one and in working in the chain one space which is the center of the Y we are going to work a double crochet chain one a treble crochet chain one and a double crochet and again follow that with a chain one and we're going to skip to the next single crochet which is right here and we're going to work a single crochet in that single crochet chain one and we're going to repeat that all the way across I'll do it one more time for you go to where the center of the next Y is which is right here and we're going to work a double crochet chain one a treble crochet Let's get it through all the oops, get all the strands. There we go. Chain one and a double crochet and a chain one and we skip to the next single crochet which is right here and work a single crochet in that single crochet. So we're going to work that all the way across the row. At the end of row three, we're going to end by working that chain one and a single crochet in that last single crochet of the row. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. Now we're ready to begin row four. We're going to turn and we're going to start with a chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to work a, a double crochet in the first chain. Just like that, which makes a Y. Chain one. And then we're going to skip to the next treble crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in the top of that treble crochet. Chain one and then we're going to skip to the next single crochet and work a treble crochet in that stitch. Chain one and then work a double crochet along the side of that treble crochet just like that. And again, a chain one and skip to the next treble crochet where we work that single crochet. And that is the repeat. Let me go ahead and do that for you one more time. A chain one and we skip to the single crochet, work a treble crochet there. Chain one and then work a double crochet along the side of that treble crochet chain one skip to the next treble where we work a single crochet atop that stitch so go ahead and work that all the way across and I'll show you how this row ends 
And after having worked this across the row, we're going to chain one. And in that last single crochet, we're going to work a treble crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet on the side, just like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn and I'm going to start row number five, which is very much like row number one. But since row one was worked in that foundation chain, I'm going to go ahead and work this for you. We're going to start with a chain five and a double crochet in that chain one space of that Y. Chain one and then we're going to work a single crochet in that single crochet. Chain one and then we come to that Y section and in that chain one space we're going to work a double crochet, chain one, a treble crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, chain one, and in the next single crochet, we work a single crochet. So let's pause and take a look at this. And this chain five at the very beginning acts as a treble crochet and a chain one, or a partial um, shell like we have crocheted here. So let me do this for you one more time, and this is gonna be the repeat, chain one, and working in that chain one space at the center of the Y, we work a double crochet, chain one, a treble crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, chain one, and then a single crochet in that single crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across and I will show you how this row ends. After working this all the way across, in that last chain space, we're going to work a double crochet, a chain one, and we end with a treble crochet, just like this. And so now from this point on, what we are going to do is we are going to repeat rows two, three, four, and five until this piece measures the length that you desire. I'm going to go ahead and work on this for probably at least 60 inches and then I will show you what I have. If you want to review those videos starting at row number two, check the bottom. I will put a time mark where you can just go back to that point in the video and re-watch those four rows should you need that additional stitch support. Okay, I've worked this until this is approximately 68 inches long and 14 inches wide. Okay, I, that may be a couple inches longer than I suggested at the beginning, but you can honestly make this any length that you desire. Um, if you want it to be a little bit longer to wrap around you more, you know, that's absolutely fine. But you're going to want to end on a repeat of the third row. And that's the one where you have the the little cluster here that's not um, broken up like like this one here where you have one and a half uh, or, or like a half of a shell. You want to end where you have the shells across the edge. And what we're going to do as we finish this off, we are going to use these shells for our tassels. And I think you're really going to like that when we get to that. So now what we need to do is essentially work a perimeter around, but really we're only going to go down across the end. We're going to go across the foundation edge and then up the other uh, row ends. We're going to end it um, right here. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do this. We're going to, first of all, turn 90 degrees. Move this out of the way so the camera doesn't focus on that. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in the same place where the last single crochet was formed. Now, in general, what I'm going to do is I work across the row ends. I'm going to crochet three single crochets in the trebles. 
I'm going to crochet two single crochets along these chains here. And when I have a row with one, well, single crochet row, I'm going to just crochet one single crochet. So we'd have like one here, one here. But let me just go ahead and start and I'm going to show you what I mean. So for the first, we have this treble crochet. I'm going to work three single crochets over that end. Now with the chain, I'm only going to make two. Now if your crocheting style, um, you know, it can be very different and as you go along, if you find that it's more even that you put three here, that's fine. The number of stitches along this edge really does not matter. What matters more than the number is how even the stitches look. You don't want them to be buckling or pulling this unusually tight in any way. You want it to just be a nice relaxed stitch. I'm going to put one here in the join and let's see, one in this single crochet and one in the next single crochet. And you can see I am crocheting over um, some loose strands here. And now for the treble, I'm going to make three single crochets over the treble. And then I'm going to work two over this chain. One, two, and then I'm going to work one in the join down here. So in a sense, that it really is almost like doing three over the chain. So it's, it's up to you. And I'm going to crochet one over the single crochet and one over the single crochet, and that should be enough on that strand. I'm going to go back to just crocheting three over that treble. Let's do two in the chain, and then one in the join, and then one in the single crochet, and then one in the single crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that all along the edge, and as you can see, that's, that's very even. Um, it's not an overabundance of stitches or anything like that. So go ahead and work that all the way to the corner and then I'll show you what to do when we get to the foundation um, side of this because I'm going to show you how to work row three along the edge of that. Now that we've worked all the way across the row ends, we're going to chain two and we're going to work our first single crochet in that first chain of the foundation chain right there. This was the first stitch when we first began. Okay, so we're going to chain one, and as we work row three in the place on the chain opposite the single crochet, this is where we're going to work the double crochet, chain one, treble crochet, chain one, and then a double crochet chain one. And then opposite where the cluster was is where we're going to work a single crochet. So go ahead and work row three all the way across the bottom of the foundation row. Let me go ahead and work another cluster here with you. And then a single crochet opposite the cluster and again this is going to be the place where we place our tassels and we're going to work this all the way across and let me just talk you through the remainder of this okay we're going to work a cluster here and then in the last chain right here we will work a single crochet chain two and then another single crochet in that same place and turn and we're going to work across the row ends just the way we did um, going down the other side. So after working that all the way across the other side, chain two, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of that last round. And go ahead and give it a chain and a tug. And I'm going to cut a generous strand so I can hide this within my work. So let me go ahead and show you how to hide this. I just like to do a quick tutorial at the end of all my videos in case you've never seen this before, but I know many of you have, so I'll make it quick. So I'm going to run this 
in to the stitch. Let's go ahead over. This might be a little bit tight because of the size of the yarn. Oh, did go right in. Okay, so and just run it under some of these. Let's turn it this way. Run it under some of the stitches here. And so we're going to run it under some of these stitches. And I'm going to come under here. And since there are a lot of single crochets right here, let's go ahead and, and hide it underneath these. Okay, and pull that on through. All right, that should be plenty. And I give it a little tug back so that it is evenly underneath those stitches. Give it a little clip and it is hidden. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at showing you how to make the fringe that we're going to put along the ends. Now I want to show you how you can add tassels or fringe to the end of your stole. Now this is optional, but I think it's a lovely addition and you should have plenty of yarn left in order to do this. Um, what I have done is I am using 10 inch fringe, which what that means is that the tassels here are 10 inches long, and which means that I used strands that were double that or 20 inches. If you're looking for a video for how to cut the fringe, check the video description below and I have a complete tutorial on just that alone. Now I'm also going to show you how to tie this in another creative way, but let me first show you how to attach the fringe with your crochet hook. The very first thing you're going to want to do is to decide which you're going to consider the front or the back side. Okay, it really doesn't matter. This stole really is reversible when worn. But I tend to favor this side, which is with the front side facing. You see the front side of the double and the treble crochet. So I'm going to call this, just for practical purposes, the front side. Now I have my stack of yarn, my, my strands that I cut. Again, these are 20 inch strands. But if, if you want shorter fringe, you can just make shorter strands. It's not a problem. And I'm using groups of five. For these particular tassels and the first thing I'm going to do is get the ends. I know they're going to be slightly different um, lengths down here. You can see how different they are. It's not going to be a problem because we're going to trim this at the end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those five together uh, as evenly as I can. And I'm going to take my crochet hook and working in the top loop of the treble crochet, the top, there we go, the two strands there of the top of that treble, and I'm going to pull the stitches down like that, all of them over the hook, and then pull through, and very gently bring that up. So you can see where the front is going to have one look and the back has a different look to it. So you're going to want to have this, you know, kind of a nice even look. So let me go ahead and do this again for you. Again, I'm going to find, get five strands, pull them away. And one thing I've noticed that this yarn, it has, you know, like I said before, a little bit of a stiffer quality to it with the uh, linen added to it, but it really does help in a great way for stitch definition and it makes fringe really uh, hang together well. And I'm really enjoying that. Okay, so let's go ahead into the next treble crochet. I'm coming up from the bottom, okay, from the back to the front, and then from the front, pulling it towards the back, yarn over and pull through. Make sure we get them all. There we go. All and gently close that off. So go ahead and work that across and then I'll show you uh, another variation you can do with knotting these together that I think will add a lovely effect. Okay, once all of the tassels have been attached, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the number in half. So that would be five and five because five plus five is 10 and I'm going to try to do this very evenly. Okay, there we go, half and half. Now the one on the end, we're not gonna split it off. We're gonna 
we're going to tie this together. So we're going to hold these together like so. I'm going to wrap them around my finger like this and then pull these through. I'm going to do this very slowly and carefully because the way I do it is going to determine how long the distance is between the knots. So I want it to be uh, about an inch and a half, but you can do it any distance you want. Okay, so I'm knotting it uh, about there. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to do this across, but I'm going to using half of each of the strands, so five and five. So you only knot all of these when it's on the end. Okay, so I'm going to hold these two together and wrap them around my finger and pull it up under. And you just have to kind of eyeball this as you go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And, and don't worry about it getting perfectly, perfectly even. There's no such thing in this life, I don't believe, but um, you can get it pretty darn close. So, you know, do the best you can. And if you don't like the way the knot looks, just carefully take it out and try again. Okay, so I'm holding these two together. I'm gonna wrap it around my finger and then pull it up under. You can see it's not a super smooth operation here. And again, I'm going for about the same length that I did with these others. And even if it's not perfectly the same, it'll just add a little more interest, right? Okay, so that's pretty good. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way across. And you know what? If you wanted to do another round like that, you can even do it again. But I'm just going to stop with um, the, the one row of knots after that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish both sides of this. Now, let me just also just remind you that when you go across to the other side, you're going to use all of the strands here and half of what's left from, from this tassel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you what I have. Well, I hope you enjoyed making Bonnie's summer lacy stole with me today. And if you did, or if you have any comments or questions, please post them below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.